Let's take a look at how to change one state of matter into another. Now, if we're looking at this, hopefully we can tell that this is a solid. The particles are vibrating in place, but they are still locked in position, so the forces of attraction are holding them together. Now, we can't change the forces of attraction between particles, but what we can do is we can give the particles more energy, and we do that by increasing their temperature. So my thermometer up here is measuring the temperature in kelvins. Remember, kelvin is the absolute scale. Zero kelvin is as cold as possible. If I go to zero kelvin, that means the particles are stopped and since temperature measures the kinetic energy of the particles the average kinetic energy of individual particles uh, if a particle is stopped it can't lose any more kinetic energy so it is at absolute zero we can't get any colder than that and you can see as I've cooled this down colder and colder and colder and colder and colder the particles have gotten slower and slower and slower and slower and slower and finally we get to zero and the particles are no longer moving so that's because the f there is no kinetic energy for the particles. Now let's heat that back up uh, and we'll see the particles start to move okay? and so that's all the way back to 10 Kelvin. It's still solid because it's locked in position. If I heat it up a little bit more you can see the part excuse me, you can see the particles are actually starting to shift around a little bit. They're not sticking together very well. I've changed it from a solid into a liquid. Okay, so these particles are now free to shift around. I did not change how strong the forces of attraction are between them. All I did was I added a little bit of energy. And so now these particles have enough energy to overcome the forces of attraction. And you can see a couple particles have enough energy to actually bounce all the way away from the substance. Although when they come back, they do stick. Now I can add a little bit more heat to this. I can get it moving a little bit faster. And now these particles are starting to change from a liquid into a gas. They're starting to bounce around all over the place. Again, I haven't changed the attractive forces between them. All I've done is given them enough energy to break free of those attractive forces. Now this is a neon gas model, and so it doesn't take very much energy for these particles to break away from each other. You can see at 38 Kelvin, they have enough energy to break away from each other. If I were to change this to a different, L or a different substance, say water, and this is 328 Kelvin, and it's a liquid. Okay, so this is 300 degrees hotter, uh, and it's still a liquid. And that's because the forces of attraction between water particles are very, 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 very strong. If I go to solid, okay, 157 Kelvin. If I go to liquid, 328 Kelvin. If I go to gas, I've got 809 Kelvin. So it takes a lot of energy to get these things to break apart from their forces of attraction enough to actually expand and fill this container. I do want to show you a couple other ones. Argon, a lot like neon, and it's going to behave similarly. Uh, and then oxygen, which if you look, we're tempted to describe oxygen as a compound because we have two different atoms bonded together, but they're not different atoms. They're two oxygen atoms bonded together. So this is a diatomic molecule in that it has two atoms in one molecule, but it's still just the element oxygen. It's not a compound because we don't have different elements. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at phase changes. Okay? So a phase change is just when something changes state. Uh, and there's three common states of matter, so there's six common phase changes. You can have solids, you can have liquids, you can have gases. And essentially, every time we do this, we're just going to say, okay, does this require energy to be absorbed or does it allow energy to be released? So if I have a solid and it goes to a liquid, that's melting. Now think about this for a minute. The particles in a solid are all arranged in a nice ordered fashion. If they go to a liquid, they have to get enough energy to break away from each other. So we call that endothermic. Endo meaning into, thermic meaning energy. So thermal energy goes into the substance and the particles move more. If this goes the other way, if we have a liquid that goes to a solid, this is of course freezing and freezing is exothermic because the particles that started as liquid have to give up their energy to the surroundings and become a solid. Okay, so if energy is entering the substance, it's endothermic. If energy is exiting the substance, it's exothermic. Uh, and we can classify the same thing, uh, liquid to gas, that's vaporization. And again, if a liquid particles are going to gain enough energy to break all the way away from each other and expand to fill their container, they're going to need to gain energy. So that's endothermic. And if gases are going to condense into a liquid, then that means they're going to lose energy, and that's exothermic. Now, the last two states of matter or phase changes that occur between solids and gases and gases and solids, 
These ones are a little bit harder for us to remember because we don't think about them as much, but if a solid turns to a gas, that's called sublimation, uh, and dry ice sublimates, uh, sublimation, and basically a solid particles have to gain enough energy to completely break away from each other, so this is endothermic. And then we go the other way around, and you have gases that become solids. This is deposition because the gas deposits onto a surface, so deposition and this means it's exothermic because the gas particles had to lose energy to become a solid. So don't get your phase changes mixed up. Uh, they're pretty straightforward and be able to calculate or at least explain the energy changes that occur.